All right, guys, this is going to be a uh, tutorial on how to set up a single switch VLAN in Packet Tracer. So let's just go and jump right into it. I'm going to go ahead and grab four generic PCs and I'm going to place them on my canvas. And then I'm going to grab a Cisco 2960 switch. This switch will allow me to set up VLANs. Okay, so before I go in and actually configure VLANs, we need to do a little initial configuration on all these devices. So let's go ahead and go through each one of these. I double click on the PC and I'm going to configure it just to make it easier to understand which PC is which. I'm going to use IP addresses for the name. So I'm going to give this the name 196, or sorry, um, 192.168.2.100. And then I'll go to the command, uh, the desktop tab, and go to IP configuration, and I'll give it that same IP address, 192.168.2.100. Hit tab, and it gives us a default subnet mask. So I'll go ahead and accept that and close, and you'll see it got updated with the new name. So I'm going to go ahead and <clears throat> do the same thing for the, the other three. I'm going to name this one 192.168.1.100. 2.101 and 1.100. So I'm going to pause it and do that real quick and then we'll come back so I don't waste time. You basically follow the same procedure and you'll see how they're all labeled on each one of these. So I'll hit. Okay, so we're back and you'll notice here that I finished configuring my PCs. These two are on the dot .2 subnet, dot .2100.2. Um, I'm sorry, the top two are on the dot .2 subnet, dot .2100 and dot .2101. And the bottom two or on the dot one subnet, dot one one hundred and dot one one oh one. I've also just used this simple text box note uh, tool and just put these, these are just simple labels, just to label that these two PCs are on the same subnet and we're gonna eventually have them be on VLAN with the ID VLAN twenty. And these two at the top are on the same subnet and they'll be in the VLAN VLAN ID ten. Okay, so now that we have that set up, we're gonna go ahead and connect our PCs to the switch. So I'm going to click on connections, and since we're connecting from a PC to a switch, we can use a copper straight through cable. You'll notice that there's a whole bunch of different options down here, but we're going to use the copper straight through. And for these top two, I'm going to first click on the switch, and I'm going to select fast ethernet. We'll do three, and I'll go from there to the PC with uh, the .2.100 address, and I'll select fast ethernet. Those are connected. I'll do the same thing for this one. I'm going to collect. Uh, I'm going to select uh, Fast Ethernet 4, and I will go to the PC uh, .2.101 dot one and connect to Fast Ethernet. So you notice I connected these two together on ports that were close together, the three port and the four port on the switch. We'll we'll get back to why we did that later. So these two are going to be on VLAN 10, and they're connected on ports three and four on the switch. We'll do the same down here, but we'll put these on different ports. So I'm going to connect uh, switch. We'll go from port 13 and we'll go to the PC 1.100 and then I'll do the same thing for the last PC I'll go from port 14 on the switch to VLAN uh, uh, sorry to the 1.100 PC on their fast ethernet so we've got switch connectivity uh, among everything here uh, but again remember that these are on different IP subnets based on how we assigned IP addresses so right now this PC and this PC even though we're connected to the same switch aren't going to be able to talk to one another because they're on different IP subnets alright so let's look at the switch I'm going to click the switch and we're going to go into the command line interface now I'm going to hit enter and then enable and you'll see that the prompt stands, changes from a switch with a carrot, a little arrow here, to with a pound sign. Now we can actually start doing some stuff with the switch. So I'm just going to start and I'm just going to type in show VLAN brief. And this gives us the basic VLANs that are set up on this switch by default. You'll notice here that we've got um, five default or five uh, VLANs set up by default. We've got VLAN with the tag ID number one, and you'll notice that all of the ports on the switch are currently in that default VLAN. And then we've got four other ones that are reserved for the ports for FDDI and token ring. We're not gonna worry about those today. 
So what we want to do is we want to set up two VLANs on our switch, VLAN 10 and VLAN 20, and then we want to assign ports on our switch to those VLANs. So this will segregate those VLAN ports, or those ports on the switch into separate VLANs, and will basically create virtual switches uh, within this one physical switch. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and go in and to start doing configuration, we need to go into global configuration mode. So there's a bunch of different ways you can do this, but I'm going to type in configure, sorry, configure, let me move the cursor out of the way, terminal. And you'll notice that it went into the config mode here. And now I want to add a couple things to our switch. So I'm going to type in VLAN 10. So this is our first VLAN, VLAN ID 10. And you'll notice it goes into config VLAN mode. So we're configuring VLAN number 10. And I'm just going to give it a name. I'm going to call it name, and we'll call it lab-1. So just pretend that those PCs are in their own lab, and we're going to name that VLAN lab1. You could call it work group 1 or marketing department or whatever you want to call it. Hit enter and exit. And then we'll do the same thing for VLAN 20. VLAN 20, and we'll call this name lab-2 and exit. Okay, so now uh, I need to exit out of the config mode and I will then uh, I hit enter real quick there to get past that config message and then we'll do show VLAN brief again and now you'll see that I've created these two new VLANs 10 and 20 so those are in the switch we've created them but no ports have been assigned to them so we actually have to assign some ports to these things so let's do that now so to assign our ports we're gonna go back in we're going to do config um, terminal, or sorry, configure terminal, back in config mode. Now I'm going to, I want to configure a range of ports. So I can do this by using the interface range command. So first I want to select the range of ports, and then I'm going to assign those to a certain type of switch port uh, for VLANs within the switch. So I'm going to do int, which is short for interface. I could type out interface too. Interface int range. And then I will do fa0 slash 3. So that's fast ethernet port 3 through 12. So now I'm in the interface range mode. So I'm con whatever the commands I do now are going to actually impact that range of interfaces, those ports. So first I'm going to type in switch port. Bear with me here, I've got a new keyboard. It's one of those ergonomic ones that doesn't really um, conform too well. So I hit, I hit. Uh, sorry, I did it a couple times. I hit um, question mark, and this tells you what my options are for switch port mode. And you'll see there's three options, access, dynamic, and trunk. Access we use to set up, this port will be on a specific VLAN unconditionally. Trunk is used when we have multiple switches that we want to connect together and we want those connections to allow traffic from multiple VLANs to go across them. So if we had a multiple switch VLAN, we'd have to set up some trunk connections. And then dynamic lets you lets the ports go back and forth between a trunk and access. All right, so we've got switch port mode. Uh, I'm going to set these to access. So I want the, this first range, FA3 to 12, to be access ports for a certain VLAN. In this case, we're going to do VLAN 10. So I hit enter. That puts them into access mode. And then I'm going to say which VLAN I want them to access. So switch port, access, and then VLAN 10. And I'll hit enter. So that's been set up. All right, so I'm going to exit. And now I want to do a different range. So now I'm going to do interface range. And I'm going to do the other set. So I'm going to do FA. 0 slash 13 through 22 and I'm going to do switch port mode access and then if you push up it brings up the last command so I'm going to do switch port access I'm sorry the up arrow just like you would do in DOS or in a, in a terminal in Linux switch port access and then for this one I'll do VLAN 20 so now hit exit exit. So what I've done is I've taken ports 3 through 12 and put them on VLAN 10 and I've taken ports 13 through 22 and put them on VLAN 20. So if I go back in and do um, show VLAN brief, you'll see now that I've configured this so that those ports 3 through 12 are on VLAN 10 
and 13 through 22 are on VLAN 20. Okay, good. <clears throat> now that these are connected, we can do a quick little exercise where I should be able to ping from this guy to this guy because they're on the same VLAN, but not across. So if I open up my desktop and go to command prompt, I'm going to ping from PC 101, 1-101 to 1.100. So ping 192.168.1.100 and you'll notice that I'm getting successful replies. So this VLAN is configured correctly. These guys are able to talk to each other in their VLAN. Now if I try pinging to a different subnet, 2.100 for example, you'll see that this will time out because we've actually segregated the switch into two different subnets now by setting up these VLANs. So this guy can't talk to these PCs up here because they're on separate VLANs. Great. So we've got a single switch VLAN set up. We've segregated our switch. Let's go one step further now. Um, this is fine, but maybe we want to let these guys talk to each other even though they're on separate VLANs. So how do we do that? This is where we need a router. So since we have virtually set up two different subnets, we need a router to connect those subnets together. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a router. It's going to bring in a basic 1841 router. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now I'm going to connect my router to my switch. Now this is important. I'm going to connect from fast ethernet 00 and I'm going to connect to the switch. So this first connection, I want it to be within the VLAN that it's going to serve as the default gateway for. So I'm going to put this in VLAN 10. So that means I want it to be in that range of 3 to 12. So we'll use one of these ones in here. So I'll pick fast Ethernet 5. And then I'm going to connect the other port on the router to the switch. And I'll put that in the range for the other VLAN, which started at 13 or 14 and or 13 and went up to 22. So I'll put that at 15. So now this router is connected to these PCs. Um, but we have to do a couple things. Before this guy can send something out of its VLAN, out of its subnet, it needs to know where the default gateway is. So I'm going to actually have to go in and configure the IP addresses for each one of these interfaces in the router and then configure the default gateways in each one of these PCs. So let's do one of those. So I'm going to click on the router and go to config and I'm going to go to interface. So interface and click the first one I set up, interface zero zero and I'm going to give it an IP address in the subnet that I want it to act like the default gateway for. So since this is going to serve VLAN 10 we want it to be 192.168.2.1 and so that's set up now to have that IP address okay and I'll just go to the command line interface you notice that when you do the when you do the GUI stuff it runs the commands for you and I'll just type in no shut and that's just a little safety thing you do that keeps that interface up all the time no shutdown all right, and then I'm going to go to interface ether, past Ethernet 01, and I'm going to put that on the other subnet, 192.168.1.1. Okay, and then I'll go to the CL command line interface and type in no shut for that one too. All right, so the router is pretty much set up. We've got these ports now acting as ports on the respective VLANs or the respective subnets. Now one thing I need to do is still set up the default gateways for each one of these PCs. So these PCs don't know where to send traffic that's going to leave their VLAN or subnet. So if I go, for example, into this one, I'm going to go into the IP config and I can set it up here and set the default gateway. So in this one, remember we made that router interface be 1.1. .1. So now it knows where the default gateway is within its subnet. So I'll close that and close that. I'm going to pause the video and do that for the rest of them. So this one will be dot one dot one. This one will be 2.1. This one will be 2.1. So let me... Okay, so I've set it up now that each of these PCs knows its default gateway. These two are have the default gateway for this interface here, which is 1.1. And these two at the top have the default gateway of this interface over here, which is the 2.1. So now I should be able to ping across subnets because the router will allow that connection to happen. So let's go in and we'll try pinging now from this, sorry, which one did I pick? Let's do PC100, 1-100, and we'll ping to 2100. So we'll go to command prompt and we'll do ping and we'll do 192.168.2.100 and 
It's taking a little while here. I think there's some ARP stuff that's out. Oh, it's timing out. There we go. We got it back. Okay, good. So let's run it again. We should see it again. So we get replies right away. The reason why we had a little delay at the beginning was because of ARP. Run this in simulation mode and you can see how all the stuff works. There you go. Good luck.